Hello, this video is about a field of four elements. So why is four? In one of the previous videos I argued that there are no fields of six elements. Uh, more generally, a num the number of elements in the finite field has to be a power of prime. And 4 happens to be the smallest such power, which is not prime itself. So let's write it as a power prime in the basis 2. And that is equivalent to saying that the characteristic of f is 2. That is equivalent to say that the uh, field f contains the field of binary numbers, the field of two elements, the field of integers mod 2. So the elements of this field are 0 and 1 or representatives of classes of even and odd numbers. So we can start writing explicitly elements of our field of 4. So there will be 0, there will be 1, and uh, all arithmetic operations close on this too, so we can't get anything new out of these two by doing arithmetic operations. So we'll have to introduce a name for the next one uh, in the list of 4. Let's call it alpha. And the next after we call beta, but we don't have to because we can be sure that the next one we can make out of alpha and 1 doing the addition. Well, why I'm so sure that this is none of the previous? Well, if I just look at possibilities of that being 0, then it would be saying that alpha is 1, negative 1, which is the same as 1. If alpha plus, if alpha plus 1 is 1, then that is to say that alpha is 0, which is again the contradiction with the choice of alpha. And finally, if these two coincide, that is um, saying that 1 is 0, which is not true. So that is a different element to the element alpha. And I will be using this notation because it's easier to use this notation, say, for um, computational purposes. Computational purposes, uh, what I mean by that is computing the addition and the multiplication tables for this field. So the first table will be the table of addition in this field. That is, of course, a square table with rows and columns labeled by elements of my field. And um, using these notations for the elements, it's very straightforward to see what happens when we add. Well, first adding with zero, we just don't change the element, and uh, the addition, of course, is commutative, so the tables, this table and the next one, will be symmetric. Uh, then 1 times, oh, sorry, rather, 1 plus 1 is 2, which is 0 in the binary world. Alpha plus 1, which I have to, be, have to record here, is alpha plus 1. It's just an element alpha plus 1. And uh, adding 1 to alpha plus 1, it will be... Um, literally giving me alpha plus 2, but 2 is 0, so I just have alpha here. Uh, this entry is uh, the record of alpha plus alpha. 2 alpha has to be 0, because 2 is 0, and 2 alpha can be seen as a product of 2 and alpha, so that is 0. In the same way, alpha plus 1 and alpha plus 1 together added will be twice alpha plus 1, and that is also 0. And adding alpha and alpha plus 1, I'll have two copies of alpha and 1. So again, 2 being 0 leaves me with this answer. And that is a complete record of addition. Now let's do the multiplication. Again, I'll have to label my rows and columns by elements of my field. And uh, we start filling it up and it looks like it's going to be extremely easy because say the first row and the first column are just full of zeros. Then we multiply by 1 and that is also very um, easy, it is determined to be just the element we multiply it with. But here we have an interesting question. So what is it? The alpha squared. The answer for alpha squared. Let's write all possible answers. 0, 1, alpha and alpha plus 1. So, um, all we know at this moment is that alpha squared is one of those elements. So let's just examine each of them one by one. Assume that alpha squared is 0 first. 
and I'll be just saying that the product of alpha and alpha is zero. That is the case which we call zero divisors in the field is impossible because we have to divide, we have to be able to divide by alpha and having alpha inverse to our disposal we can conclude that alpha is zero, which is not what we chose it to be. So it was something which is different to zero and one. So that is impossible. Let's look at the next situation, alpha squared being one. Um, again, we can rewrite it as alpha squared plus 1, or plus and minus are the same, and then we can write this as a product of two things, alpha plus 1 and alpha plus 1 again. So this is the instance of so-called Freshman's Dream Theorem. We have a zero divisor situation again, so the product of alpha plus, plus 1 with itself is zero, which basically has to say in the field that alpha plus 1 is zero itself, but it is not. Alpha is not 1. So we cannot have this case as well. Now we are down to this situation that alpha is equal to alpha, alpha squared is equal to alpha, which is also factorable uh, as a polynomial. Now we have this product being 0. Again, a contradiction in the field. We don't have products of non-zero elements giving us 0. And we are left with just the only option, after scratching this one, uh, that alpha squared has to be alpha plus 1. And that is the option which is going to be consistent because if I assume it here, then I have to compute, say, these three more entries, or uh, two more entries. I have to compute what happens for alpha times alpha plus 1. But that is easy arithmetic now, since I know what alpha squared is because I can rewrite it as alpha squared plus alpha, and alpha squared is known, and I have these, and putting alphas together, I just kill them, because it will be twice alpha, and I have one. So I have one here, and the final computation is for alpha plus one all squared, but then again, according to the freshman's dream, according to this, it's alpha squared plus one, and alpha squared is alpha plus one, and I have extra one, and two ones, kill each other, leaving me with alpha. So that is the multiplication rule, which you can, can check for consistency. It's associative, uh, it is distributive, and it gives us a field. Let's um, look at this statement. So the statement is saying that alpha is a root of the polynomial. I'll, I'll write it without minuses because I can, because it's all binary. And this is, um, we checked it before in class, and this is an irreducible polynomial. So this polynomial, this polynomial t squared plus t plus 1, is an irreducible polynomial over the field of two elements, over the binary field. So what we can say in st um, um, as a conclusion of this computation, we can say that our field is isomorphic, so we effectively constructed an isomorphism um, with the quotient field of polynomials with binary coefficients modular the ideal generated by this polynomial t squared plus t plus 1. Under this isomorphism, the class of the variable is turning into alpha. So that is really a genetic construction of fields. We discussed it as a, our first industrial construction. Take some commutative ring, take maximal ideal, quotient by and get a field. And that way you can construct fields of any finite number of elements. But um, I want to now conclude with the second con um, um, observation from our computation. Let's look at the invertible elements. So the the, um, the fact that f is a field, well, let me let me write it as a field of four elements now because that's what it is. So I'll write it everywhere. Uh, the field of four elements. Um, if we take away zero and under considered under multiplication. That is a finite group, and the number of elements in the group is 3, so 1, alpha, and alpha plus 1. And the group operation is recorded here, 
and you could see that uh, no surprise three element group has to be cyclic has to be generated by a single element and it doesn't matter which non-trivial element you take alpha or alpha plus one it will be a generator so these you could recognize as a addition table of integers mod 3 as prototypical cyclic group of other three so that is another generic an instance an instance of generic feature that elements um, non-zero elements of a finite field will form a multiplicative group and this group as we checked before will have to be cyclic i'll stop now bye